Welcome back to Gamecocks in the Kitchen. I'm your host, Meredith Allman. March means it's time to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So for tonight's episode, we're going to be making a traditional Irish meal. We're going to be making a corned beef and onion pie, Irish champ, and for dessert, we're going to be making an American dessert with a little Irish twist. So let's get started. So the main two ingredients of any Irish meal are going to be your meat and your vegetables. Both of tonight's dishes are going to have both of those things. So when we're going to start out with all of these hearty vegetables, it's really important we're going to make sure that we wash them all really well and we're going to kind of dice them all up. Now for the Irish champ, champ is sort of like a mashed potato dish. So what you're going to want to do with these is you're going to want to quarter them. Um, this just helps them boil a little bit better when they get in the pot a little later. With the other ingredients for the corned beef um, pie, we're going to chop those up really finely and put them in our pan. So I'm going to go start washing them. potatoes I have a little nifty potato peeler and pretty much all you do is just run the sharp edge down the side of your potato and the peelings come right off. After I'm finished cutting everything, I'm just going to put it all in one bowl. It's all going in the same pan, so it doesn't really matter if everything mixes up at this point. Um, so just take your diced potato and put it in a bowl so we have room to continue cutting our carrots and our celery.
that we have all of our vegetables chopped up for our corned beef pie, we're gonna go ahead and heat up our pan. Um, we're gonna put one tablespoon of butter in the pan with a little bit of olive oil. Um, and then we're just gonna pour our vegetables in, stir it up, cook them, um, and then we'll move on. Cut about an ounce. Um, the margarine butter does have lines on the packaging, so you'll be able to measure it that way. You don't actually have to measure out an ounce and then just pour a little bit of olive oil in your pan. Since I'm using a nonstick pan, I'm going to make sure that I use a wooden spoon anytime that I stir. So just let that heat up. Okay, we're gonna let these cook in here um, for about 15 minutes. Just keep coming back and stirring them every now and then. Um, since it's gonna take a while, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our champ. And I'm going to fill up a pot of water, pour our potatoes in, we're gonna start boiling that and then we'll move on. heating up for our potatoes, I'm going to go ahead and chop up our green onion. Um, the green onion is really what's going to make this dish significant. Um, it's green for St. Patrick's Day. And onions are very flavorful, especially when you add them to a plainer dish like mashed potatoes. Um, the recipe calls for five green onions. You can get a uh, handful at any store, any grocery store. Just go ahead and use them all. It's not going to hurt. Um, and then we're just going to cut all the way from the end of the stalk. All the way down. The green is just going to give you that good green look to your mashed potatoes. Um, it's also going to taste really good. And then your flavor is at the bottom, um, at the end of the onion, towards the root. Make sure you get those pieces as well. And when I'm finished with this, we're gonna put it in a little bowl, set it off to the side until our mashed potatoes are finished. And then our next step is we're gonna go ahead and make that cream sauce that's gonna make those mashed potatoes really creamy, really delicious. So. Okay, so for each the butter, the cream, and the milk, we're gonna get a measuring cup. You only need half a cup for each. So we'll just measure that out. Pour half a cup in our pot. Now it's really important um, when you're making any sort of cream sauce, especially for mashed potatoes, you want a rich flavor, make sure that you get full fat whipping cream. If you get light or non-fat, it's not gonna do the same flavor. I mean, I know you might be watching your weight, but it's just not gonna taste the same. So this is something you just gotta go for, making mashed potatoes or anything creamy. Let's add that. And then we're just going to use the remaining butter from what we used with our corned beef pie. Um, it's a little under half of a cup, but it's going to do the same thing. So just add that in there. Turn your heat on low. And just let that heat up. So most 
most of the time when you're making a corned beef dish, you want to get the meat ahead of time and slow cook it in its own brine. Since we're college students and we're low on cash and on time, we're going to use the canned kind of corned beef. So, from here, our vegetables are, um, they're ready. They're ready. They're, they've cooked for a little while. We're going to add some ketchup in the pan. Just kind of like go around like that. Stir it. And once the ketchup is completely stirred in with your vegetables, now we're going to add our corned beef. Alright, that wasn't so hard, was it? Now, we're just going to put it in. Just break it up with your spoon. Mix it in and fold over your vegetables in with the meat. It smells really good. And I'm starving, so ready to eat. Okay, so once all of that is mixed together, we're actually going to turn off the burner and remove it from the heat and let it sit there for about 20 minutes. Now our next, next move for the pie is to lay our crust inside of our casserole dish and then we're going to pour the stuff in there once it's cold, lay another layer of pastry over top of it and then we'll put it in the oven. To make our pie, we need to put our pastry down in the bottom first. We're going to pull this out. I bought puff pastry sheets from the store. It's just a lot easier than having to make your own dough. And it will fold right out for you to use. So just go ahead and lay it in the bottom of your casserole dish. Before I continue, I'm going to preheat my oven to 375 okay and that's gonna heat up we have another sheet that we're gonna save until we pour the stuff on in the middle so let's check and see if this is cooled Looks like it's ready to go. So just take your pan that's been cooling off of the heat and pour it in here. Just scrape it out of your pan. Spread it around in your dish. And now we're going to take our last pastry sheet and we're going to lay it on top. Lay it just like you laid the first one. Press it down. If you need to trim it, it's not a big deal. You can tear off some pieces. Um, and then make sure to press the top pastry into the one on the bottom so it becomes sort of like a seal. Press them together and do the same all around the sides. This is why I like using this big pan, this big dish, so I can have enough room to do all of this. Kind of make like, make like a really big hot pocket. And seal it up. I'm going to take some more dough and put it over here just to enclose it. Keep going. 
All right, so before we bake it, um, we've already pressed down everything, so we want to take an egg and break it into your measuring cup. Take the end of your pastry brush and just kind of whisk it around in there. Right, and then we're going to take our brush and just brush the egg over top of your pie. And now this is just going to help when it bakes. It's just going to help it bake more. It's going to give it a little brown on the top. It won't be as doughy. It'll be more cakey. So just brush your egg over the top. Okay. Um, and now take your knife and just kind of ventilate it. So you're going to just take your knife and run it across diagonally one way and then across diagonally the other once again that's just going to help it bake all right so we're ready to go oven's preheated so let's put it in Our potatoes have been boiling and we've let them simmer for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat. We're going to drain them, put them into our bowl, and mash them up. I had a potato peeler earlier, now I have a potato masher. Keep in mind that they're still really hot. Steam will burn you, so let them cool a minute if they feel too hot. Just kind of fold them over with your spoon. So dig your spoon under, lift it up, fold it over. So that we don't overbeat the mashed potatoes. Pour a little more in there. They're looking pretty good. Okay, I think these look like a good consistency, so I'm gonna take my spoon and just kind of make a little divot in the middle of the potatoes. Now we're going to pour in our green onions that have been sitting over there for a while. And continue folding them until all of these are mixed up together. Okay, and your Irish champ is complete. Okay, so the last dish we're going to make isn't necessarily a traditional Irish dish, but a shamrock shake sure does make the St. Patrick's Day holiday great. So, um, I usually go to McDonald's and buy mine, but tonight I decided to make them myself. So you need vanilla ice cream, mint extract, green food coloring, and milk. Pretty simple, and you get a delicious treat. So I have a little cup that I use in my blender. My blender is set up back there and we'll use that in a minute. Just unscrew the lid and open our ice cream. it out. Just do about two scoops. Okay. And then we're going to do a cup of milk.
less because it won't fit. Then we're gonna add a little bit of mint extract. Stuff is strong, so just be very gentle with it. Pour it in. And, ooh, I can smell that mint. And our green food coloring is what's really gonna make it festive. So, the green food coloring is not going to affect the taste, so you can put as much as you want. Just going to sprinkle a little right there and close it. Now we're going to take it back to our blender, mix it up for a shake. Unscrew our lid. Pour it into one of our cups. And we have a shamrock shake. It's pretty good. Okay, our pie is ready to get taken out, so let's do it. Right here, simple as that, you've made a traditional Irish meal. Once again, we have a corned beef and onion pie with the Irish champ. So, next time someone asks you what you want to do on St. Patty's Day, let them know you want to cook. Thanks for watching Gamecocks in the Kitchen, and we'll see you again next time.